I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Your first 10 FPV freestyle tricks. And even if you are not brand new to FPV and you know a few freestyle tricks, I still think you should watch this video because these aren't just 10 random freestyle tricks that I pulled out of a hat. They actually build on each other, and each one teaches a certain fundamental skill that will make you a better pilot. So even if you know a few FPV freestyle tricks, I still think you should check this list out because you may have missed one of these and you may be missing a fundamental skill in your sort of piloting toolbox. Let's go. So we're not gonna mess around with a lot of talking. We're gonna get right into the list. And the very first trick that I want you to learn is gaps, hitting gaps. Now you're probably thinking, wow, a little tiny, impressive, super, yeah, let me just go under this fence rail. No, that's not what I mean. Start with big gaps, because at the end of the day, hitting a gap just means making the quadcopter go where you intend for it to go. And so working on gaps will just start to make you a better pilot overall. And if you can't, like, pick a gap, like this, look at this gap between these two branches. It's a giant gap. Don't worry, as a beginner, it may freak you out just a little bit. As you get better, you're gonna start hitting smaller and smaller gaps like this one, right? But you just wanna be able to make the quad go where you want it to go. So, start by hitting gaps. When you do a gap, in the beginning, you're gonna to wanna to line up at a great distance from the gap and just fly straight at it, making as few adjustments as you can and paying attention to if you're like offline for the gap. So if as I'm getting close to the gap, oh look, I'm climbing, right? I wasn't, rather than trying to make just a rapid correction, just just go around, just miss the gap, go around, stop. Just line up that gap, be headed straight towards it. Find the position on your sticks that causes you to just go right to that gap and go through it. And as you get better and better, you can start working on smaller and smaller gaps, tighter and tighter gaps, more and more impressive situations, you know, but just be able to fly through gaps. That's step one. Number two, flips and rolls. In order to do flips and rolls, I, I want you to start by getting some altitude so you have plenty of time. You're going to lower throttle and push your stick all the way over so your quadcopter does a flip. Or you can pull your stick all the way front or back so you do a roll. Okay, those are flips and rolls. Now, you want to get some altitude because if you have low rates, you may need a minute, a few seconds to actually finish the flip or roll. This is one of the moves that's easier, easier to do if you have a little bit higher rates. But even with relatively low rate, you should be able to do a flip or a roll relatively easily. Okay, so you're gonna just go up in the air and do flips and rolls. Now, it's so easy. How can you make them better? You can focus on stopping with the horizon exactly where you mean for it to be. Right? Stop with the horizon perfectly level so you don't want to overshoot. That's an overshoot. See, I ended up looking at the sky. And you don't want to undershoot. Well, that was actually not much of an undershoot. But... And the faster you go, the harder that's going to be. See, I am actually not really good at snapping. I a big bounce back, too. What was that about? I'm not actually great at doing real fast snaps to the horizon. My horizon there is pretty level. Um, and we'll talk a minute, in a minute about why that is and what I'm doing instead. But flips and rolls. Jeez, what's going on with my tune? Holy crap. Okay, let's just not pay any attention to that real quick. There we go. I'm starting to get it. Okay. Snaps, flips and rolls at altitude up high in the sky. Try and stop the horizon in exactly the right place. Level horizon if you're doing a roll, not too pitched forward or pitched back if you're doing a flip. For number three on this list, we're gonna do flips and rolls. Wait a minute, we already did flips and rolls, but we're gonna mix it up. And the way we're gonna mix it up is we're gonna mix up the speeds. So one thing we can do is instead of doing a full flipper roll, we can do one that's segmented. Like, 90s, we can do a 90 and a 270, we can do a 180 and a 180, we can break it up and the more precise you get, the better I don't actually do this very much. Wow, 
I need work. Work at this. Wow. See, there's a hole in my training. That's a kind of a 180. I turn back over with a 270. Now you'll notice that I'm having to get a lot of altitude and I'm getting pretty close to the ground. That's going to relate to a trick we do in the future. But you're going to want to work on these just doing segmented flips and rolls, 180s, 360s, and 90s. And I think that these actually get more interesting, because see, here's the thing, I don't really do a snap like that. I don't think that's very interesting, although perhaps there's a, there's a purpose to it. What I like to do is I like to mix up the speed of them. And so, for example, I might do fast, slow, but never really stopping at any point. So go full stick deflection, and then let the stick come in a little bit. And that's why I also am not very good at snap 360s, at <clears throat> getting the horizon exactly right, because I just never do that. What I'll do is, and, and I'll just stop the horizon wherever I want it to be. I think that makes the moves more flowy, although there certainly is a style that, you know, the snappiness is nice too. So, work on stopping the flips and rolls at different positions and work on changing up the speed of the flips and rolls. So there was like a fast, slow, fast, right? Just mix that up. Work on changing up the, the speed of those flips and rolls. For number four, we're gonna to put together what we just did, turning sideways, <laughs> and put it together with number one, which was gaps, and we're gonna do knife edge gaps. Now some might see this as more of an advanced move and be surprised to see it so early in the list, but it really gets you thinking about your quad's movement, and if you can hit gaps, then you can hit knife edge gaps, right? Now, this right here, this tree, this is one of my favorite knife edge gaps on my property, but don't start with super narrow knife edge gaps start with something a little bit wider and you know a gap that you could normally fly through and just knife edge it instead of flying through it just to get you used to how the quad moves so we'll just go here and we'll come out of it you can uh, continue to roll the same way or you can roll back the other way whichever you prefer You should know that if you have your throttle raised, you'll be pulled in the direction that you were going. Whoops, almost crashed there. Um, so just take a look here. If I leave my throttle up, it's gonna pull me away that direction. Whereas if you lower your throttle all the way to zero, you'll mostly, you'll still go that direction just a little because of the motor's idles. So you wanna get to low throttle for this move. And you wanna think about which way you're gonna get pulled and approach from the other direction. So if we do a gap where we know we're gonna turn left, we know we're gonna get pulled a little to the left, so we'll want to approach slightly from the right side. And get pulled just to the left. And right through the gap. Knife edge gaps. It's clean as heck. Let's see if I can do it twice in a row. Not bad. So there's some knife edge gaps. edge gaps are really good if you've got two trees that are together. Here's another one on my property that I think is pretty good. Right around. Right around here I think is a good one. And I kind of like to just roll out of it like that. You can finish the roll going the same direction if you want. See? Various ways you can come out of that. Knife edge gaps. Give yourself some room on the other side of the gap. Uh, the first time you try this, but if you can hit gaps, you can hit a knife edge too. And that will kind of open up the door to playing with pitch and roll. Because see, like, right here, I don't need to knife edge this. I can just fly straight through it. But it's so much more interesting if I knife edge it or if I'm just playing with pitch and roll. So if you can knife edge it, then you can, you can just do basically anything through there. It starts to really mix up flying through gaps and having more control over what the quad comes. Number five.
gonna be the inverted hang. And the goal of this move is to get you comfortable with being upside down and how much hang time your quad has and what the ground looks like as it's rushing up to you. You're just gonna turn over upside down and stay there for as long as you feel comfortable. Now you can start by just going up in the air and turning over and watching the ground come towards you. That's fine, but it would be better to learn it in a more dynamic way because a lot of freestyle moves are gonna start with you doing a punch and then using the momentum from your throttle punch to do a move as your quad flies through the air. So you're gonna to wanna to get used to how much hang time you get based on how much you punch. So you can punch and turn inverted and stay there. And turn back over and get your throttle up before you crater into the ground, of course. Now I'm not actually just sitting inverted. I like to keep the quad moving like that with some rotation. I'm not just hanging inverted. You can just hang inverted if you want and turn over, that's fine. And I'm doing it with rolls, but you can also do it with flips. And that's gonna bring us into move number six, which is the inverted look back. So just turning upside down, I don't know, it can be kind of useful. You're doing a little flight line and you just kind of come out of the line and you go upside down for a minute. That can be fun. But inverted look back, I think is a really cool move. And the way you do it is you punch, and you pitch forward and you 180 pitch forward to look back and you watch the ground sort of go away from you and you're going to need to really have a feel for how much air time how much hang time you're going to get uh, from that throttle punch because it's a little difficult to tell when you're looking back how close you are to the ground and it's easy to misjudge <laughs> and, and go right into the ground so be prepared for that unfortunately this move doesn't look near as awesome if you do it in the air. No, see that's boring. So you really gotta do this move close to the ground to make it its best, and that's gonna get you started getting used to doing these moves in proximity. Close to the ground, and getting a sense for how much hang time that you'll get from it. Okay, so that is moves five and six. Move number seven, gonna be the split S. This is a really basic move and a lot of people learn it as their first freestyle move. But I'm a, I, because I'm trying to like build on the fundamentals, I feel like it comes later because let's look at what a split S is. So to do a split S, you're gonna go up, you're gonna turn inverted and go over an obstacle and come back. Typically, you're gonna come back through underneath the obstacle. A split S involves a 180 roll, it involves inverted hang time, so I think that split S's sort of build on those fundamentals and, and you shouldn't skip those fundamentals, but obviously you can go in whatever order you want. So split S, you're gonna climb over and then back under an obstacle. Now sometimes you'll do the split S with more of a float. Like for big ones, I might do kind of a float here. It's gonna be real important to get your throttle down through that. It'll extend the distance of your float if your throttle is low can really fly over the obstacle there. I didn't actually go back under it there, but you can also do it a little more proximity style here where there's not as much of a, a float underneath or over the obstacle. You just kind of pivot and go back under. And this is a really cool move. This is a very basic move, but I think, oh, it I think it can be really cool. There's a lot of different ways you can do variants on it and it opens up that's how to bail out, by the way. If, you, if you're falling short and you need to bail out, the way you do it is you just continue the roll and, and turn back upright and fly out of it. My battery's dying. Okay, time for a new battery. Trick number eight is a power loop. Now, power loop at its simplest is you're gonna throttle up, you're gonna pitch back, and you're just gonna loop the quad. So I'm gonna throttle up, I'm gonna pitch back. As I crest, I'm gonna lower the throttle and come through the other side, and that's a power loop. Um, some people feel like in order for it to really be a power loop, you need to be power on the whole time. That does give a sort of, it finishes the move faster, but I like to just float through the end of it. It's, you know, there's variations on how you can do it. But what you want to make sure you're doing with a power loop is you always want to make sure that you're continuing to pitch back long enough to fling yourself backwards. So like if I do a power loop like this, 
you see I'm still moving forwards at this moment. I kind of did like a curly cue teardrop shape, but not really a circular loop. So you want to stay on the throttle long enough that you throw yourself backwards. And ideally you want to keep the move even as possible. So I exited it early there. I didn't get enough back on that one. I'm gonna pull back more. Hold on. Let's see if I can do this right for you guys. If you have to jerk back and finish the move, be like, oh sh oh crap! That that doesn't make it look the best. Now, here's a trick you can do if you're in a situation like this. You can do the power loop next to some trees or something, and it can give you a visual on what your quad's doing. It can be a little hard to tell what your quad's doing. So if I just look at the left side of my screen, I can see those trees, and I can kind of see where I'm at as I do the power loops. Now, once you start getting a little confident doing power loops, here's why power loops are so useful, because they force you to think about how your quad is moving not just when you're flying forward under power, but when it's under the sort of thrall of gravity. So you can start doing power loops by flying underneath obstacles and power looping over them. Ooh, that was a nice tight one. So you're probably not going to want to start like that. <laughs> you're probably going to want to start with just a little bit of pitch back and do a big power loop over the obstacle, right? And the tighter you pitch back and the more throttle you give, the more you will stay tight to that until eventually you'll end up right inside it. So that's what you want to try to avoid. Well, I gotta go get my quad now. <laughs> By the way, what I just did, don't do that in like a 70 foot tall pine tree or you're gonna have a bad day. Okay, the taller the obstacle that you're power looping, the more careful and confident you need to be with your technique. The way to bail out of a power loop, if it's about to go south, you know, like you see the tree coming up at you and you're like, ah, is just finish the 180 and turn right side up again. So you're, you're pitching back, right? And you see the tree, just continue to flip around, pitch back the rest of the way, come upright and then just fly out of it. That's how to bail out. And um, yeah. Oh, one more thing. The more up tilt you've got, the easier it is to power loop. So the more up tilt your camera is, the more you look into the power loop and can see where you're going and gauge your proximity to the obstacle. Final thing about power looping is you punch up and then as you turn inverted, you, you, you can't get any more up because your engines are pointing down, right? So the more you punch up, the higher you're going to go and the more momentum you're going to have to fling yourself over. And that's why this move is like easy to understand but hard to master. If you look at masters of the power loop like Stinger Swarm and dare I say it, ladrib has got some hella good power loops. Drib will go out floor two of a car park and power loop up into floor three. You got to judge that so carefully with how much pop and how much throttle to get it so you don't overshoot or undershoot. And that's why work this move and you will become much, much more attuned to how your quad flies and moves. Okay, I gotta get my quad. Number nine is the yaw spin. Now, this is one of those moves that's more complicated than it seems because you probably, you might think a yaw spin just means that you bump the yaw stick to the side. And I guess that's okay, but what I want you to see here is if you're flying forward when you do that, then watch what happens when I do a 180 yaw. I end up looking at the sky and that's because the quad is pitched forward, so when it yaws, it's pitched backwards, and that doesn't look the best. So what I want you to work with a yaw spin is you can, you can turn the quad to keep it coordinated, right, by putting in pitch, uh, by putting in roll and yaw together, right, that's just a nice coordinated turn. I want you to put in roll and yaw together to keep the horizon where you want it, basically to keep the quad sort of pitched forward throughout the move, right? You need to put just enough roll to keep the quad pitched forward or keep the horizon flat. And manage altitude while you do it. This also forces you to manage your throttle at the same time that you're managing yaw, which is something a lot of people aren't as good at. Which is something a lot of people aren't as good at. You may notice, uh, I'm actually sure what I'm doing with my throttle. When you do yaw moves, a lot of times you'll gain altitude you saw there because the motors will speed up so you may in order to keep your altitude need to start dropping throttle just a little bit joshua from the future here uh the other reason that i drop throttle when i do yaw spins is that i i want to keep my 
momentum going forwards. I don't want to actually lose forward momentum. So I kind of want to keep the spin neutral. The quad needs to keep moving the same direction as I do the yaw spin and come out of it kind of going the same direction that it does. So the higher your throttle while you're yaw spinning, the more you will pull yourself offline and slow yourself down. You want to have some forward momentum, kind of quickly yaw and roll and drop the throttle so that when you come out of it, you're still going the same direction that you were. At least that's one way to do it. But you're going to want to just work on yaw spins. And once you start to get those, you can start developing that into sort of interesting moves that you can do, like... Right, you can just yaw spin. Here, I'm going to go to the left, but... Oh, hello, tree. No, 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 please, 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 please. Okay, sorry, I lost the video there for a second. You can, uh, instead of turning to the left, you can roll to the right with a yaw spin. You can do a yaw spin as you fly past an object. Number 10 is going to be the move made famous by Mr. Steel, the orbit. And I think this is, um, uh, this is a great move to finish on because it requires just combination of all the controls, pitch, roll, yaw, and throttle, as well as just a constant adjustment of where the quad is relative to the obstacle to do a really smooth orbit just demonstrates a real mastery of the quad. So what I'm doing right now is just flying in circles around the obstacle, the, the uh, birdhouse, and you can see that I am roll right and yaw right, and I'm coordinating this turn. But for an orbit, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start facing the object within the center of the screen, and then let's roll to the left and yaw to the right and pitch forward. And we're going to try to just keep the quad oriented like that as we circle an object. So roll to the left, yaw to the right, pitch forward is what we're doing here. And we can do that the other direction as well. Roll to the left, yaw to the... Hang on. Roll to the left, yaw to the left. Going the same way. Hold on a second. Roll to the left. Hang on. No, I want to roll to the right. What was I doing? Roll to the. Why am I rolling to the left? Both ways. Am I rolling to? Am I rolling to the left? Yeah, I'm definitely rolling to the left. Oh my God! What am I doing? Am I rolling to the right? Oh no, I am rolling to the right, aren't I? I see, I see. Huh. So you initiate the move. Sorry guys, I know what my fingers are doing, but I can't explain it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna initiate the move with a roll to the left so the quad moves left, but then you're gonna yaw and roll right to keep the move going. Because it's gonna wanna straighten out. Anyway, look at my sticks. quad is doing. I see. I'm kind of doing both depending on what the quad is doing. Sometimes rolling to the right, sometimes to the left. It's pretty much always yawing to the right though. But I'm keeping the quad tilted to the side, to the outside, and I'm pitching forward definitely. And the faster you do this, higher the throttle. It's kind of a little easier going faster, isn't it? Okay, that's the orbit. And there's my dog. Okay, Chopper. He doesn't chase the quad anymore. He knows he can't catch it. What, what let's do now is, let me just hit some freestyle and try and incorporate these moves in interesting ways that kind of show of how they can be incorporated into like a full freestyle. I like 
doing a power loops close to the obstacle like that. It's really fun. I meant to do a little look back there, but didn't quite get it. There's a look back over an obstacle. Let's do a split S. We're going to enter this split S a little oblique and come back under. I didn't come straight on there. Entered it at kind of an angle. That's okay. And we'll do a inverted float over the house and drop down in here. There was a little power loop there, but it kind of just popped off the off the building a little bit. Not a smooth power loop. Do a split S over this tree. Big split. spin and another split S here. That's kind of fun. Let's see here. Roll there. Up close to the obstacle. Inverted. We'll do half a power loop there and roll out of it. That's nice. Let's do a split S here. Not really a split S. S into the gap here and inverted hang over the house. I meant to carry more speed, but I didn't have it, so I just kind of pitched the back out of it. Power loop there. Really love doing those power loops like that. Like that's where. Power loops can kind of begin to dress up your moves. Yaw spin. Let's do an orbit here. I don't know what that was supposed to be, but it wasn't. <laughs> Aborted, aborted power loop. <laughs> I like a little power loop here with something in front of you. Because it gives you something to index off of and see what your quad is doing. So here I got this tree in front of me. Oh yeah, very nice. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. Your first 10 FPV freestyle tricks. This obviously is not a complete tutorial on all of these tricks. We could make a 15-20 minute video about any of these, and some of them I have. I'll put links down in the video description if you want to dig a little deeper. I hope that last flight showed you that each of these moves, they, they sort of open the door to more complex and interesting, sophisticated flying. At least I, I hope that's what you saw. I hope you weren't watching that last flight and going, eh, whatever, it's not that impressive. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, thank you, welcome. I got a lot of videos teaching you all about flying, beta flight, beta flight, mostly beta flight, pit tuning. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying.